Hi everyone, it's Shane Hennessy here. What you're about to watch is a tutorial for my tune Montmartre, which is on my album Rain Dance. And this is an example of a lesson that I would do over on my True Fire channel, the Fretboard Atlas. So if you're interested in checking out more lessons like this about my original tunes, traditional Irish music, all aspects of guitar playing, little bits about music theory, and also interviews with some of my favorite musicians, make sure to click the link in the description to find out all about the Fretboard Atlas on Truefire. Montmartre is a tune of mine from my album Rain Dance, and it's inspired by sounds that I heard at the top of the Sacre Coeur in Paris when I was there a few years ago. You hear a lot of this, or at least for me, it was my first time hearing um, a sort of a very lo-fi hip-hop sound. And there are these amazing dancers up there. There are documentaries about them um, online. Um, but it was their, the music that they danced to really captured me. And so I tried to find a way to emulate that groove on the guitar. So I'm going to play it for you first. Um, just the, the kind of the main groove of the tune. And then we're going to break down the um you know the the aspects of my technique that i uh, use to achieve that groove and then we'll go through um the tune section by section so this is what the main groove sounds like one two three First of all, let me bring you through the chords that I'm using. The first chord is an A minor 7, like this along the 5th fret. Then we've got a D minor 9 chord. Then we've got an F major 9 chord. Through here. Then we've got an E7 with a sharp 9, falling down to an E7 with a flat 9. In other words, a G note going down to an F note, like that, with a B flat in the bass. Then we've got A uh, minor 7 again, the D minor 9 chord, which falls down to C with E in the bass. Then we've got F major 7, alternates between those two chords. Um, and then at the end we've got a B minor 11 chord. Like that, it's a really nice chord. And then a B flat 9 with a sharp 11. Okay, now the names of those chords aren't particularly important. I don't think of them that way. I worked out the names of those chords so that I was able to describe them um, to you for this video. What's more important to me is thinking about the chords in their simple form. So for example, that D minor 9 to me is just a D minor with the uh, on top, leading up to F major 7 with uh, and then this to me in, in my head is E7 that a simple kind of E7 like that and then ba -da, with that B flat in the bottom I'm not thinking of the chords um, individually like as blocks I'm thinking of them as simple chord plus moving musical line which I've talked about um, on the channel um, before and make sure you check out the moving musical line section to learn more about that so now let's talk about the technique that I use to actually get that groove in the first place and there are a couple of um, components to this um, the main one, I suppose, that you'll notice is that I use my thumb to get that sort of dull uh, sort of sound from the strings, the kind of the, the kick drum sound. But what you'll notice is I'm not going for this backbeat sound that I do in a lot of my other pieces. I'm not aiming to get that click that you would usually hear off of this fret. Um, I'm aiming instead at more towards the saddle of the guitar down here. And I'm using my thumb in a very sort of a flat way to hit the strings. So I'm aiming for sort of the, the two middle strings. And by doing that, I end up hitting all of the other strings below them as well. Like that. So I get that sort of kick drum sound and the sort of muted chord effect. And um, it's not too brash. You know, it doesn't have you know, all of the tones or the frequencies of the guitar. It just has that kind of nice muted sound that you want, like that. And then what you would think of as the sort of the snare drum effect is a strum downwards with my fingers like this. Now again, this isn't, um, I've spoke before about the backbeat technique that I use. This isn't like the backbeat where I'm bringing my hand down onto the strings and leaving it there. This is as if you were strumming the guitar 
your fingers, but it's just a little bit more forceful. And you'll notice that the strings are muted when I do that as well. So you don't get... Um, Okay, that's what it would sound like if I didn't mute it. So the strings are muted by my left hand every time I do one of those. Sometimes if you just use one finger you hear, you get those kind of harmonic sounds that come out. So you want to make sure to use a couple of fingers to mute the strings completely. Like that. So those are the kind of the main two components, the kick and then the, the snare, I suppose. And then the other thing that I might utilize is, as well as my fingers doing a downstroke, I might also use my fingers to do a light upstroke as well. So even though I'm going down forcefully with the fingers when the, um, the strings are muted, I'll also come back up with the fingers as well every now and again. I don't put that in all the time, but what I'm going to do is to show you these techniques first and then we'll look at how to put them together after I finish talking about them. So the one uh, final thing that I want to bring to your attention then is another thing, a, sort of a, a technique that I do with my left hand where I get a ghost note or a sort of a percussive hit using um, one of the fingers of the left hand. And what I mean by that is sometimes you'll hear me uh, play this. So what if I do that slowly. So you'll notice there I hit with my um, ring finger here on my fretting hand and then my thumb and then a downstroke and that kind of gives me an extra kind of if you had a you know a drum kit in front of you that would be like using one of the other drums just to kind of um, accentuate a different beat or you know bring in an extra ghost note essentially so those are sort of the, the, the techniques that I use while I'm playing the groove so now that I've explained those let's take a look at how to actually play this the best way for me to describe this and to teach this to you is to go through every movement um, as they happen. So uh, we start off the bar uh, with a, um, a hit by the thumb, which is followed by another hit by the thumb, so that's two hits. Then we do a downstroke with our fingers, that's muted. And then we also do a small kind of upstroke with the fingers as well, that's also muted. Um, followed by another thumb hit. So if I play that really slowly, it sounds like this. Two, three, four. Like that, okay, that's how much we've covered so far. So thumb, thumb, down, up, thumb, and then we get ready to go into the next bar. So that's thumb, thumb, down, up, thumb, and we get ready to land into the, um, to the next bar of music. Now, what you'll notice as well is that the downstroke with my fingers, this, is a lot more forceful than the upstroke. The upstroke is nice and gentle. The downstroke is a lot more forceful because I want it to have that snare drum sound, whereas I want the upstroke to be a lot more gentle in the groove. Like that, okay? So then we land into the next bar of music. So that again starts with the thumb. And what you'll notice then, immediately after I play the, the, the thumb, I'll also do that ghost note with my left hand here, that little sort of tapping sound. Um, and again, I'm, I'm keeping that bar here to keep everything muted. And I use my ring finger, that seems to be the one I can get the most velocity with. Um, and I use that to create the, um, the kind of the tapping sound of the string, sort of hitting the fret below it there. So I've got thumb, ghost note, and then I use my thumb here, but it's muted, okay? So this is the first time we hear the thumb playing a muted um, sort of hit, as opposed to a hit that has a chord in it. So I go thumb, ghost note, thumb, and then downstroke, okay? So this sounds a little bit kind of strange out of context, but if I play it in context up to there, it sounds like this. Two, three, four. Okay, that's how far we've gotten so far. So that's thumb, thumb, down, up, thumb, thumb, ghost note, thumb, down stroke, like that. Okay, or down hit, if you want to think of it that way. And then to finish off that bar in the groove, what I would do immediately after that down stroke is another up stroke, but this up stroke 
has some of the chordal information in it. So I'm vamping here. Vamping is a term that we use uh, when we're talking about uh, controlling muting with our fretting hand. So for me, that's the left hand. And vamping is essentially, if I play a chord like this, and I vamp it, it means I've muted the chord just by lifting my hand off the fretboard. So in this case, as opposed to doing a, a downstroke and then a muted upstroke, like we did earlier, in this case we do a downstroke and then an upstroke, but it's vamped, which means we hear the chord just for a split second, and then it disappears because we mute it with our left hand like that. And finally, to finish off the groove then, we do one more muted thumb hit. In other words, we don't hear a chord. So if I play that and then talk you through it, it sounds like this. A two, three, four. Now talk you through it. So we're going thumb, thumb, down, up, thumb, thumb, ghost note, thumb, down, vamped, and then uh, the thumb at the end. That's kind of hard to say and uh, play at the same time. But if I play it up to speed, it sounds like this. Two, three, four. So the, the same uh, kind of groove template is used across all of the bars um, in the tune. What might vary a little bit from chord to chord is whether or not I can make that um, ghost note with my hand. And if I can't, you'll often hear me instead putting in like a, uh, you know, a pull off or a hammer on or like an open string hammer on, like a hammer on out of nowhere, they're called. Um, you'll often hear me do things like that just to kind of keep that part of the groove in the chord. So for example, um, what you'll often hear me do when I come to this uh, D minor chord the second time around, um, when I played... Uh, what you'll hear me do there is a kind of a very subtle hammer-on, but again adds to the groove and it's in keeping with this sort of groove template that we have in that the full D minor chord, D minor 11 chord that I play. Okay, so you've got like 5th fret, 5th fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret, 5th fret, 3rd fret. It's a difficult chord to make. Add on top of that then, that we're actually going to use these two fingers, our ring finger and our pinky, um, our little finger. We're going to lift those off at the start. So we've got this chord, which is 5th fret, 5th fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, 3rd fret. It's like a G on top and a D minor on the bottom. And what we do is we hammer on to those uh, notes on the 5th fret that make up the rest of that D minor 11 chord. So in other words, I hit this chord and then hammer on to those two notes. And it's a really, really subtle thing, but you definitely hear it in the groove as part of the bigger picture. So listen out for it this time on the second chord that I play. Like that, okay, that's where the feeling comes into it. So you see those little subtleties of the groove are peppered throughout it, not necessarily always using the same technique, but always trying to achieve the same feeling. Right, so now let's look at the verse section of Montmartre. So, um, the chords are similar to the first part, but not exactly the same. So if we're going through the chords uh, one by one, it starts off with an A minor, up to a C, then a D minor, F, G, and then it's similar, A minor, C, D minor, up to an E7 chord up there. That's all an A minor. Then a C chord, but it's a C7 chord here. Then an F. That's a B flat 7 chord. Uh, that is a um, like a, a B diminished or maybe a half diminished chord. And then we uh, come down to like an E7 chord. Down to A minor. 
into the chorus there. So let's break that down movement by movement and see what's going on. What you'll notice about this part of the tune is that I'm wearing a thumb pick um, to play uh, every part of the tune after the intro section. So usually what I do is I have the thumb pick somewhere close by and I'll kind of hang out on that last, that B flat chord, or sometimes I'll hit like this kind of E7 with a flat nine sort of chord, like that. And I'll pick the thumb pick up, put it on, and, and slide into that A to start the, the groove. Um, or, excuse me, to start the, the verse section. So what's going on here is the first chord, as I said, is an A minor chord. It's kind of built around an A minor 7 chord. So what I'm doing there is um, I have a bar across the 5th fret here, getting that A in the bass, and then I'm running up through uh, the A minor 7 notes. So G, A, C, E, G, E, like that. They're all notes of the A minor, A minor 7 chord. And you'll notice there that I get that high G with my thumb pick because I think that adds to the attack, it adds to the feeling of the tune overall. Like that. So after I play those notes, I come down to this, it's kind of like a passing chord, it's a B minor 7, all on the 7th fret here. Then we come down to... This is our C chord, but again, when I say C chord, it doesn't mean that I'm actually making a full C chord. It means I've got a C in the bass. And this, the melody that goes with it is um, C, A, G, A. And you also hear a backbeat coming in after that G melody note. Like that. Um, then from there, we move on to a, a D minor uh, 9 chord. Okay. Um, and again, I don't think of these chords as, oh, this is a D minor 9. I have to kind of do a little bit of working out in my head. What I'm just thinking of is, there's a, like a, a simple D minor 7 chord here. Like that. And I'm looking for the melody. Ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. So by combining the melody and the chord, you end up with D minor 9. But as a standard chord, I just think of it as D minor or D minor 7. Um, so that's all happening here around the 5th um, fret. So I'm looking for E, D, C, D, like that. Then we're down to um, F down here. And then we get uh, the chord of G, and that's just your standard G. And then A minor 7 to finish it off. But what really punctuates it nicely is the backbeat that, that is coming in usually very strictly on the 2 and the 4. Uh, where is it? Uh, like that. Okay, so usually that backbeat um, is coming in on the 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. The only exceptions to that, uh, at least in this, in what we've covered so far, is at the very beginning, I don't put it in, so that first two beat. I ignore it for the two and I bring it in on the four. Then for the D minor chord, there it is. There it is again. And then I do this, like that. So you hear it's a G, A minor seven. And there's a backbeat in between both of those. And they're a little bit like the, the punctuation of the song and that it kind of makes the chord stand out more when there's a little bit of silence and a percussive hit and then a new chord gets it to stand out in the groove a little bit more. So moving on from there, um, the next part is similar up to this chord, up to that like D minor nine chord. But then I slide up here and I do my same trick again by uh, bringing in the backbeat up to that E7 chord, like that. Um, so that brings us up to the E7, and then I go up here. That the melody notes are A, B. Then I play this version of an A minor seven chord, like that. If you follow my caged plus system. This is an A minor 7 in the shape of a D minor 7. Uh, um, so in other words, the chord is A minor 7, but it looks like a D minor 7, just further up the neck. Like that. 
Um, so that's what I play in order to get the melody out. And then I play this, this uh, melody line over. So C, B, A, G. And in between the A and the G, I've got another backbeat. Then I bring in the B in the bass down here, which is a like a passing note on the way up to the C7 chord. Like that. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, A minor 7. And we, we end up down here on this C note on the 5th fret. Um, and that sets us up nicely for um, what would be an F chord. Dropping down to a B flat. So this is a little bit tricky. Um, the F that I'm playing here, I suppose, is more technically an F6 chord. But I, again, I don't think of it that way. I think of it as the chord plus the melody. So what the way I'm fingering it is that I've got my pinky here on the 8th fret. I've got my middle finger on the 7th fret on the 4th string. And then I've got my ring finger uh, on the 7th fret on the 3rd string. And you see it's a, it's a mix there of kind of the hammer-ons and pull-offs. So the first two notes are fretted. And then the next uh, couple of notes are um, kind of slid into each other. Pull-off. And then that kind of, that note is popped. Coming down then into your B-flat chord. So. And then I hammer on when I hit the, that B flat in the bass. I've also got uh, an A flat here on my fourth string, which is in the sixth fret. So there it's going from the fifth fret up to the seventh fret on the third string. And again, that's a, a hammer on. Then we get to our B half diminished chord. Okay, so it's 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 not strictly a, a half diminished chord because I'm not sticking purely to this, but that's the sound that I'm going for. So I've got um, an E in the melody, then up to F, down to E, E flat or D sharp, um, and then after we play that, uh, we slide down to. So what's going on here is the chord would be an E7 chord, like that, but the notes that we play are like that. So the notes are D, E flat, D, C, A, G, A, like that. So after I play that C, A, G, C, I hit that C again. And then we pull off from that C note on the 5th fret to the open string. And then the A on the 2nd fret. And that's the last part of it. So A, G, E. And then E flat, pull it off to D. C, pull it off to A, G, C. And then bend the C up like that. that and then finishing off on a sort of a little fake raschiato I suppose like that along the um, fifth fret here to get that intro point into our chorus section so there's an awful lot in that first section but take it slowly piece by piece and um, and put it together and remember the best way to do this is to focus on the bass line and the melody note then put in your backbeat and then put in the rest of the chord whatever else you can fit in that's the best way to approach um, any kind of difficult tune like this. So now we're going to talk about the chorus of Montmartre. And uh, this chorus um, initially is uh, all played in harmonies. So... And then after I hit that F chord, it's mostly played in single notes. Like that. Okay, so if we're going through the chords, they are the same as the intro section that we talked about. A minor. Then we've got D minor. F major 7. Then we've got like a B half diminished. 
and then an E7 chord. And you would call that an E7 because of that F note, I suppose you'd call it an E7 flat 9. Like that. And then the same again. D minor. Uh, then that C with the E in the bass. F major 7. Then the B half diminished chord. And then up to a like an E7 chord. I play that bit differently each time I play it. Uh, you know, I might play it like that as well, playing B half diminished, E7. Or something like that, you know, that's like an E chord with a G in the bass. E7 with G in the bass, like that as well. There's a lot of different ways I play that section, but it's always the same idea. B half diminished. So it's E7, G sharp in the bass, back up to A minor 7. So now let's look at how to actually play this. We start off here, up here on the um, the ninth and eighth fret. So I'm on the ninth fret on the third string, and the eighth fret on the first string, like so. And then uh, what I do is I slide into the seventh fret on the same strings, like that. And then again we have the ninth fret and the eighth fret, but this time we're on strings uh, four and two instead of three and one. So we've got. That. And then I slide down to this kind of open D minor shape. So I get the D in the bass, and again I've got um, the same sort of shape in my fingers. I've got uh, fret 7 on the 4th string, and I've got fret 6 on the 2nd string, and then the open strings in between, the G and the E strings. So they ring out together. So just a recap up to there. And you notice there I'm, I'm not doing this when I'm talking slowly, but I'm also putting in the backbeat where I can on beats two and four. It's like a one, two, three, four. Here. Like that. Now what I usually do here as well is that um, if I'm using this fingering, it's uh, I do it this way. Um, I put in a little bass line stretching down to the, the next F chord. So if I'm fingering the chord this way using my little finger and my ring finger, I'll play it this way. The notes are D, C, A, G, like that. If I'm fingering the chord this way, like that, so. stretch down that way as well and I won't necessarily hold a chord that long either down to that F major 7 chord um, so again just to recap on that that's holding that D minor shape C A G F I strum through that F major 7 chord so what's going on there is I'm aiming for the melody notes a, excuse me, E, A, E, like that. And if you want to kind of harmonize them to make them stand out more, um, pick strings one and two together, and then strings three and four together, like that. That's optional. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just focus purely on the melody. Or with the harmony. Like that. So it's... It's up to yourself as to how you want to make that feel, but that's how I do it. So that's the F major 7. And then I put this in. So my thumb is doing a lot of work there. I've got my left hand thumb, my fretting thumb, playing the F here on the first fret. Then I've got G, A, C, A, like that. And I'm getting that with my um, ring finger on my fretting hand. Then I go to my B half diminished, then to my E7 chord, uh, with that F in it, which makes it a, an E7 flat 9. And then to E with a G sharp in the bass, so it's an E with a, a first inversion. Um, 
so yeah, up to there, just a quick recap. The harmonies, landing on the D minor chord. C, A, G, F major 7. G, A, C, A. Okay, so that's like a B half diminished. Now what I sometimes do there as well, you may have heard it, is B half diminished. I kind of hit that A on the way down uh, and I hold the rest of an F chord and then that's my E7 flat 9 chord so in other words the melody I'm thinking of there is da -da 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 like that so if I were getting a singer to sing that it'd be da -da 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 not the E is not necessarily important there, but it, it sounds nice in the in the um, the grand scheme of things. Um, so yeah. Like that. Um, and you notice there that's like another one of those hammer-ons out of nowhere that I do. Like that. Um, and again, that just adds to the feeling overall. I just do it because it sounds like it's, it's still staying within the groove. So I'm muting everything, and then a hammer on out of nowhere. And then I hit the strings, and then I do my little ghost note, or like my hammer on out of nowhere. Then, the second time around in the chorus, it's mostly the same up until the end. So it's the same idea. The harmonies. C, B, G, F, E, F. Then I hit that C with the E in the bass. And then I hit the F major 7 with the open G string. And then I aim for the melody with my thumb pick. Do that little bass run again. Here's where things are a little bit different. So I, I really kind of break up that B half diminished chord. Backbeat. E flat. Backbeat through my E chord and then I make this chord this is another E chord here but it's got a G in the bass so if you're familiar with the cage plus system that's E is a C shape it looks like a C up there with a G sharp in the bass but instead of making a bar I just play it with my um, my fretting hand thumb instead and that leads me back in nicely to to go back into uh, that A minor chord to bring me into the next um, A section or verse puts me in the right position on the guitar neck um, the only place that this is a bit different is the second time around that I play the kind of chorus section when I get towards the end um, what I do here is um, instead of finishing down here on the E7 I finish up here on the E7 instead and this brings me nicely then into sort of the the middle section uh, that you call the middle eight or the C part of the tune, or the bridge, I suppose. And in the next part, we're going to look at how to play this uh, bridge section. So the bridge section starts on an F major seven after I come up to it. Okay, so that E seven here is your E seven as an A seven shape, essentially. Then we've got F major seven as an A major seven shape. So I play that first. Okay, now this is a bit of a handful of a chord. This, is, you may recognize this as like a diminished shape that you can move up and down the neck. Um, so I put that diminished shape either with an E in the bass or with a B in the bass. It's whatever I feel at the time because it's actually the same chord. This is an E7 with a flat 9. So it's the same chord as this. It's just in a higher place up the neck like that. So you get it by that diminished shape along the 9th and 10th frets. 9, 10, 9, 10, and an E in the bass, or a B in the bass as well, same chord. Um, and what I do is, uh, I follow that melody line, so it's like A, B, C, D, C, B. Then we go down to uh, A minor 9, like that, so that's A minor with a B on top. B, G, so that's like A minor with a G on top, and I also put a D in it. I like how it sounds. And then what I play here is 
Um, this is, I suppose, technically like an F sharp um, diminished chord or half diminished chord, like that. Um, sometimes I put a B flat in as well, just because I like how it sounds, like that. So if you're looking for a technical name for that, I'll put it in the video. It'll appear in the video. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but I'll find the name for it. Um, so sometimes I play that chord as well, which is 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 4th fret, 3rd fret, 1st fret, open string as well. Again, I'm just kind of looking for... My ear is listening for the resolutions in the chords as opposed to listening for, you know, kind of names or following numbers or anything like that. I know that the B flat that I play will resolve to an A in the next chord. So that's kind of how I'm thinking about that. Um, so yeah, just to go over that again, uh, F major 7, then we have our E7 flat 9, then we've got A minor 9, then with the G on top, then we've got this chord, okay, and again that brings us down to that kind of F sharp diminished sounding thing, play it again. And I think on the album I just kind of hung out there playing that kind of voicing of an A minor up here, but what I've been doing more recently is this. Like that. So I'll bring you through that riff because that's what I'm doing at the moment. Um, so I'm playing E, C, A, G, and this is kind of like reminiscent of the banjo roll technique we've been talking about. Again, I'm just kind of following the notes here of the, the A minor um, scale more than anything else. E, C, A, G, C, A, G, E, G, E, D, E, D, C, D, C, A, C. So I'm sliding down to the next kind of applicable note um, as much as possible um, on the, the third and second strings. all within not necessarily the scale but the chord of a minor 7 and then finishing it off there a g e gonna pull off from the first fret onto the d and then i play the the same thing just an octave lower f so it's the f chord so a b c d there's a b half diminished a minor chord play a D, that's a D chord, with an F sharp in the bass, then we bring it to F major 7, and I, I um, let the, uh, the G string ring open halfway through that, E suspended, down to E7, but I stop it on the E7, like that, and I kind of I mute the strings, and then that brings us into the solo, so just to go over that one more time, F major 7, our E chord, E7 flat 9, then we have our A minor with our B, G, like that, um, that chord, then we've got the same thing again, F major 7, da, 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 da. C, D, E, and again on the album, I just kind of hang out there for a while, but what I, I explained was... F and then uh, so the melody there is A B C D that's our B half diminished A minor coming down to those notes E C A D the chord there is D with an F sharp in the bass C D E that's F major 7 and then we open up the G string the third string and then E suspended technically an E suspended 4 seven stop it and that's when the solo starts and on the album um, I I put this down the the intro section essentially I put it down again to play over in the solo so 
so that's um, what I do for that um, for that section. So now, having looked at that, let's take a look at the solo. The solo follows the same chord pattern as the intro and the chorus. So in other words, um, we're still playing over A minor seven, the D minor chord, F, B half diminished, E, and again, A minor seven, D minor, then C with the E in the bass, F major seven, and then, this chord from the um, the intro, which is the um, B minor 11 chord. And then we've got this B flat 9 chord, but it's got a sharp 11, so it's got an E note in it. Like an E natural note. Like that. So, um, if we go through the solo section by section, I'll talk about what's going on here. So the solo starts over, um, while we're still on the kind of the last bar of that E7. Um, and it goes up like that, okay? So that's like a real Pin Lizzy sort of a sound or something like that. So I'm holding this E here on the 12th fret, but I'm also using my little finger and my other fingers to push the note on the B string, which is a D sharp, okay, in tune with the E. So I push it up in pitch, and I push it up to an E like that, so. And it really helps to use the other fingers here. It really helps to use those, uh, the middle and the ring finger, because if you try and push with the little finger alone, it's a bit hard. But if you use all the fingers, it becomes really easy. Like that. So that's how I start it, and then I go. I think I do something like that. So that's coming down through the notes of just a, a regular A minor, and our A minor seven, with a G in it, so. C, A, G, E, G, A. So that's a little bit of sweet picking on my part there as well. I'm, I'm going down with a, an upstroke, essentially. It's going up, I should say, with an upstroke. Like that. And then I hit a D minor 7 chord. So right after that. Bah, bah, bah. So what's going on here is I'm playing through the D minor chord, going E flat D C A G C G A G F. Those are just the notes that are in that scale. Like that. With one passing note, E E flat D. Like that. Then I play over this uh, F chord. Uh, And again, these are just notes from that scale. Okay, so the only th thing I can point out there. C, B, C, B, A, G, E, F, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. And then that leads me into a, a G sharp, which is in that uh, E7 chord. But what I play over this is a diminished sound. Now, why do I play the diminished sound over an E7? Well, if you went into the music theory explanation, it'd be like, oh, you know, the E7 is your dominant five chord and diminished and blah, all that kind of stuff. I don't really understand that. The way I think of it is, is that I've, the top part of an E7 chord to me, when you extend it, you've got E, G sharp, B, D, like that, okay? And then in normal circumstances, you'd have like an F sharp there, but in this case, F sounds good, but that top part of the E7, G sharp, B, D, that's a diminished chord. And one thing I know about diminished chords is that once I've got one, I can play it up three frets, and I can play it up another three frets, and I can play it up another three frets. So that connects it well together for me. So when I hear like a seven chord, like an E7, like that, I know that I can probably get away with making it that diminished chord. That's the same thing the whole way up. I'm passing note up to, landing on high E. So then we've got, we're back to A minor again. Okay, take a short break, and then I do this. So what's going on here is I'm playing uh, e, C, A, D, B, G, C, A, G. 
down like that, down through like it's near like an A minor pentatonic. That kind, of, that kind of bluesy idea. But those, they're coming from the idea of we've got A minor, um, which is a chord in the key, and we've also got G, which is a chord in the key. So I can play the chord tones. That's E, C, A, D, B, G, C, A. Continue down through my A minor pentatonic. Then I play this. Okay, because we've landed there on a, a D minor chord. But what I can do just to increase the tension a little bit is instead of landing on the D and the F, I can land on the E minor instead. And then bring it down to the D minor just to kind of delay that sort of mini resolution a bit. And then the chord hits, like, the chord in the backing is C, and then it's landing on F major 7 as a chord. So what I do down here is, this is a lick that I stole from Phil Keggy, and um, I, I heard him play this one time, and I just loved how it sounded. Like that. It's just a way of, it's, you're using the chord tones of F major 7. F, A, C, E. So that's actually extending it out to an F major 9. And then start that pattern again. Like that. Okay. So even though the chord is F major 7, I'm actually extending it one note further. F A C E G E. F A C E G E. And I start doing it again. Like that. Chord tones of F. F A C. F A C. Okay. Now then, here's where you can get it to sound a bit kind of jazz fusion-y. These chords that I play um, in the backing, this is the B minor 11 chord, like that, falling down to uh, a B flat 9 chord with a sharp 11, so E instead of B flat. So what I did here is I did the same thing. I play um, the notes of uh, the B minor 11 chord, like that. Okay, so I've got uh, C sharp, A, F sharp, D, C, B, and then A as well, so like that. And then I took the same sort of shape, okay, so if you think of da, 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 and I adjusted it for the notes of the next chord, okay, so I followed the same idea. That. So now we've got C, A, F, and then this is a D flat or C sharp, C, B flat, like that. So it's the same idea. Like that, okay? So that suits the, um, they're essentially notes from the scale that relate to both of those chords. Like that. So. Like that and the reason it kind of sounds oh that's interesting is because I put in these um, hammer-ons and pull-offs and I kind of sweep my way through it so as opposed to just going like that I'm going so it's a so that's a, like a hammer-on pull-off and that's all um, upstrokes like that same for both and then landing on A minor okay so that then brings us into the next cycle of chords and what I do there on the album is that I go uh, so I play the A minor and then I play this and I just think of all of those as voicings of A minor I don't think of them really as separate chords I just look for okay well then all the notes I can use are in the scale A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, like that. So I can think I can use, okay, so I have, um, excuse me, uh, starting off with the A minor 7. Then I put the B note into it. Then I come up here. And again, this is just a sort of a very ambiguous voicing. I've got E, A, D, G, all notes in the scale. Again here, I've got, um, what is it? I've got uh, C, G, A, E. So again, all these notes are suggesting like A, C, and E, and G, they all suggest an A minor seven chord. Like that, they all 
all just sound like different versions of A minor to me. Uh, so coming into the solo. Um, This chord sounds different to my ear, and why is that? It's because it's got a very prominent F in it, like that. So now that chord to me sounds like F major seven, which is what we're on. Okay, so. That's where our F chord comes in. Then I play this. So that's D, C, B, A, C, B, A. I just like how those notes sound. Okay, now here's another one of these kind of outside sounding things. Again, we've got the E7, or the, the dominant chord, the V chord here. And I always think that you can get away with playing a lot of stuff over a V chord, a, a dominant chord, for whatever reason. I don't really know why, but you just can. Um, so what I decided to put in here was... Excuse me, that's a chromatic run. So uh, after landing, I landed on the G, okay, and then to sort of make that resolution, that would suggest E7. But what I did is I ran the whole thing down from there. G sharp, G, F, um, oh, sorry, F sharp, F, E, D flat. D, C sharp, C, B, A, G sharp, A, B, C, A, E, C, B, A, like that. So, okay, so right down to that other G sharp. Okay, any version of those notes, you know, gets the same feeling. That's a really important thing about, like, these kind of solos. You don't have to get the solo note for note to get it to feel the same. Um, so, okay, then I do something like that. So that's uh, working my way up through, like, um, it, the way I think of it is uh, D minor, C with the E in the bass, uh, F major uh, 7, A minor, and then landing on F again and that's just the way it works in my head in, in practicality or in actuality what I play on the album is starts here on the um, tenth fret okay so you've got that from like an F chord okay then you've got up on the twelfth fret here you've got G and B that's from your G chord then you've got uh, C and A again from your F chord B and D from your G chord then you've got A and C um, or excuse me, C and E, which is from your F major 7 chord. So you've got... Da, 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 da. And then to finish off the phrase, I play... Again, playing notes that are in that scale. A, G, F, E, G, F, E, D. Now here's where things get weird. Again, as I said, over that dominant chord, that E7, you can get away with playing so much stuff. So what I put in here is a whole tone scale, which means that each note that I play is going to go down by two semitones the whole time. So... And that lands perfectly on A to get back into the groove, so... Uh, That's the whole tone scale, it's only got, I think, six notes in it. Um, yeah. And that leads you right back down to the A perfectly. And I sort of reverse engineered that. I wanted to land on the A there, so I had to figure out where to start. So I had to kind of work my way up. Okay, right, okay, I need to start on this F, or this... You can think of it as an E sharp, but an F. Um, that's where I have to start this riff in order to land in the right place. And 
that then brings me uh, into the chorus. So that's the solo as it is played on the album. So now after we come out of the solo, we go back into the chorus section. And what I usually do is I kind of I don't go heavy straight back into the chorus. Um, I kind of wait for a second and I go like and then we're back in on that kind of that F major 7 chord so I kind of keep it very uh, light I suppose twice around. Okay, and so I, I kind of, I play that last E7 chord once. And then I drop the thumb pick at the same time. So I actually flick the thumb pick off, let it fall on the floor. So it falls down and then I hit the guitar like that and then back into. Back into the intro section. Now this is how I finish it. Like that. So what I'm doing there is I'm I'm using that uh, B minor 11 chord from the beginning, and then drop down to the B flat 9 chord with the open E string. That's the sharp 11. So I'm doing two hits, mute, two hits, mute, and I mute that kind of on the beat. So the first mute is hit, hit, stop, hit, hit, stop, like that. So one, two. like that and that's how I end the tune so I hope that has been insightful into Montmartre there is an awful lot in that tune it's not uh, an easy tune to play as most of my tunes seem to be, um, have that in common um, but if there's anything you'd like more clarification on anything that wasn't immediately obvious let me know and I'll do a clarification video for you and hopefully that will be able to open it up for you um, even more than what's in the video already